Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Mountains, blood of the Indian. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone. He's free. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch, mountain man. Beneath the romance of the mountain man lies the harsh reality of life in the open. It's a life punctuated by the clash of a steel trap. Never pretty, but done right, swift and clean. And compared to other tangled ways of life in this complicated world, there remains considerable reason to recommend it to the enterprising young man. For winter provisions for the mountain man, there was nothing better than elk. Elk were once spread wide across the continent, found in more places than any other big animal. They lived in low country and high, but the mountain men knew that the place to find them was on the snowy ridges and peaks, deep in the dark canyons, and among the stands of looming black timber. Elk country has a perilous secret, though one that it shrouds in white. It's a secret it keeps until it knows you've come too far. Then, like a trap, it closes on you, holding you in its freezing jaws. And it's up to you to find a way to survive its grip. It's the grip of deadly cold that Laramie will face before this adventure is done. Laramie is not the first to confront the icy bite of weather and have to resort to drastic measures to come out alive. For the mountain men, the shadow of death from cold and snow fell remorselessly across their trails as they made their way through the bitterest seasons of the year. The packs on the horses of Zenas Leonard and his compatriots were laden with a fortune of prime pelts when a pitiless blizzard fell upon them. Days of relentless snowfall brought progress to a halt as deep drifts choked off the passes and buried the trails. The party was forced to roast their treasure of beaver hides for sustenance. Finally, with nothing left for their pack horses to carry, and with the prospect of death by starvation staring them in the face, there appeared only one heart-wrenching judgment. Laramie knows the treachery that can lie in this peaceful, beautiful elk country, but can he survive it? Having fed out early, the elk are now on the move back to the protection of the dark timber. It's late in the season for bugling, but not for other ways of calling. Elk, they gotta talk. They react to calling all year long. You know, you can't get aggressive like you do during the peak of the rut with them calling-wise, but you can still just like cow calls or lost calf calls. 
he might find a big bull. He might come sneaking in, just curious, check things out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit here for a little bit, and I'm just gonna lightly cow call for 20, 30 minutes. Even this late in the season, the cow calls bring a response that shatters the forest silence. worth of meat hangs on one shot. <laughs> Above the mountains gather threatening snow clouds, and across the peaks, Laramie hunts the elk he needs for his winter provisions. In just a second, the hammer on the Hawken will fall. The hammer falls, and disaster too. In his mind, Laramie considers all that could have gone wrong. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is that nothing goes wrong the next time he has a shot. Or, like some before him, he may be left without winter meat or with a cruel choice. By the pitiful warmth of a meager fire, Zenas Leonard and his starving fellow trappers reached a harsh verdict to kill one of their gaunt horses. Slitting open its belly, they plunged into its steaming raw intestines and gorged. Eventually, as they made their arduous way out of the snowed-in country, they devoured all their stock. Only luck stayed them from even more heinous deeds. Laramie is some ways from starvation, but he has to keep his cool and not let frustration get the better of him. As much as I'd like to go chase these elk, I think they're gonna come feed back through here. If I'll just be patient, I'll get my shot. So I think I'm gonna hunker down by one of these stumps, get some brush in front of me, and just wait them out so you're till dark. It warmed up quite a bit today. It's been real cool in the teens. All day today it was 38, 40, 45. It tells me one thing, that there's a front coming in. More than likely, probably gonna have snow in the morning. As the hours of the day slink by, an unexpected meal comes into sight. Fox has been called unedible, but Laramie knows better. You add a little this, a little that, and a prodigious pinch of hunger. Well, I already got some potatoes and found some wild onions. And now I'm putting some fox meat in here. Gotta add that protein somehow. Now tell me that doesn't look finger looking good. Nothing like some good old fox stew. You know, this is the first time I've ever eaten fox. I've eaten just about everything else in North America, but fox and coyote, two things I haven't eaten. And I'll never eat snake or horse. Not bad. I believe you could survive off it. I'm making my own bullets. I melted my own lead, casting it, the whole works. 
I'm self-sustaining. Yeah, it's not as much work to go buy from the store. But you put yourself in that position. What if someday you can't get ammunition in the store? You know, you can't get any of the things to make ammunition. Well, you can get any of your lead stuff anywhere around. You can melt it down and you can create yourself some bullets. I can promise you I won't ever starve. I've got this deer hide and I've already salted it a couple times and stored it. That way it gets all the moisture out of the hide. What I'm doing now is I'm going to finish flushing the whole thing. There's still little pieces of flesh here and there that I didn't get off the first time. And I'm going to get all this salt off and finish flushing it real good. And then it will be ready to go in some water and soak, you know, to help seal them follicles of hair into that hide. And then uh, I'll either wind up making a vest or more than likely I'll make some stalkers out of it. But it's a very time consuming project. I might be able to wear this next year. But it'll be that same deal to where it's something that I have made and I know exactly where it came from and it makes me feel a lot better about what I wear when I know that my hands made it. spread with a new blanket of white is perfect for stalking. Last night it felt like snow. The front came in and warmed up for just a little bit. We got a nice little dusting. It'll help a lot for visibility, so hopefully this morning can be a good morning. Although early in the day, other hunters are out. Did you just hear that wolf in the distance? Did you? It's a beauty to be judged warily. This is home to the elk, and for Laramie, the site of an unforeseen catastrophe. For Laramie, the hunt goes on with hopes of no more misfires. There the elk are on the move into the timber. Just spotted some elk over here clear across the canyon. in here while well, they're back in here this morning but we got this storm came through it's a full moon they moved real early before daylight this is about three hours old probably maybe four you know how you tell how fresh elk sign is yeah you taste it <laughs> and if it's chewy or slimy then you know it's fairly fresh Fallen white snow is like the page of a journal on which the elk are writing a record for Laramie to read. Got 
some fresh out tracks. Looks like two cows and a bull going down this way. Looks like they just crossed. They're a mountain lion track. You see his toes and his paw. They're fresh out tracks. Looks like a mountain lion's bright following these elk. It's doing the same thing we are. Well, I want to eat before that dang mountain lion does. Or else the mountain lion might be dinner. are out above the mountaintops. Laramie walks the ridges in pursuit of the elk, the wapiti, stateliest of all the deer in the words of the mountain men. And now it's a race between Laramie and a hunter who treads on four clawed paws. Well, <laughs> there's a herd of elk clear across the canyon. It looks like I can, I can see for sure one bull in the herd. It's about 10 o'clock, probably 9.30. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to circle around this canyon. It'll be about two, three mile hike, but I circle around this canyon and come in above them. And that way I can crawl down there, kinda of in the timber, so I should be able to get somewhat close to them. are mountains filled with deception because that bright sun may be snuffed out in a second. Air, once warm, begins to be filled with drifting flakes of white. Flakes go from drifting to falling, and as the freezing white jaws close, it's time to make shelter to survive the night. If you know the traditional ways, as Sasquatch does, there's plenty here to build not only what's required for survival, but for true comfort. It may seem contrary, but one of the choicest things for keeping heat on the inside is snow on the outside. You know, like they say, snow's one of the best insulators. And that's the truth. That wind kicks up tonight and it gets, you know, zero degrees or whatever. That snow is gonna keep me warm. Not my bedroll, not nothing like that. That snow, it'll keep all the wind off me. It'll be perfect. I'll be like sleeping in the Hilton Hotel or something. But no mint on the pillow. And this is what Laramie will have instead of a thermostat on the wall. When the fire is reluctant to start, you add magnesium shavings and stand back. Fire, shelter, survival, yes. But as important is the sense of self-reliance that's earned. In the bright morning sun, the place to hunt for Wapiti is on the south slopes, where they can soak up the heat after a frigid night. This is one shot Laramie is taking no chances on. Or 
guards that don't even know we're here. I'm gonna whistle and hopefully he'll stand up. stands, a fine five by five. And there is no question on this shot. He's down. <laughs> Tell you what, Ryan tickled to death and he is gonna eat wonderful. He's gonna feed the Sasquatch family, that's for sure. Well, it's been one of those hunts. We've uh, been at it for quite a few days now. Then we got all the snow and the weather and we got the elk up and moving and we had to work a little bit for this guy, but it finally all panned out. What I got, I got back straps and elk back straps, not little white tail back straps. I got the good stuff. No horses were harmed in the making of this program, and Laramie's winter meat will see him farther along the trail of the mountain man. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Black lines on parchment only hint at the adventure Laramie Sasquatch Miller seeks. To some, these are mountains, but for others, they are the bare backbone of a wild continent through which life spark flows. And Laramie Miller's quest has been to make his way here, traveling and hunting as the mountain men of another century did. His gear may not be foolproof, as when his hawk and rifle misfires. But that's part of the bargain he's made with the game and the land. Trading cold efficiency for challenge. Now, he moves on to his next adventure, Wapiti in the mountains of Northeast Washington, in what was once Oregon Territory. Just heard a bull moose grunting. Maybe cool to see him. <laughs> Laramie is on a hunt for help. But the first big game he finds is a young bull moose. It seems that Laramie and the bull moose have been vying for the attentions of the same cow with their calling. And Laramie may have won, perhaps to his regret. These cow moose can be dangerous. Without question, moose injure far more people every year than bears do. This lone cow, though, doesn't have a calf, so it's probably safe for Sasquatch to play charades with her, pretending he's a fine figure of a bull moose. I was just playing with her. 
You know, the big bulls will get to waddling past the rut a little bit, but you never know. She wasn't too spooked, so it's all fun. Laramie's picked his campsite beside fast-flowing fresh water to make his life easier. And it's not just Laramie that values water. It's vital to the elk who will come here to drink and wallow, increasing Laramie's chances of finding them along here. These damp woods, though, make it difficult to find dry bark for tinder to build a fire. The best choices are spruce or cedar bark, which will dry quickly. Laramie knows enough to build a compact teepee fire, reminded by the old saying that the Indian makes a small fire and sits close to stay warm, while the white man makes a big fire and stays warm collecting wood. You know, I usually hunt in nothing but stuff that me or my grandpa have made. But in a lot of these states, because I'm carrying a black powder rifle, you have to wear orange during that season. Puts a hiccup in my game, but that's what the law says and that's what I'm gonna do. This stately and splendid deer, the lordliest of its kind. Those the words of Theodore Roosevelt about the elk. Okay, we're here in uh... Eastern Washington. Most people don't think about Eastern Washington when you, you think about elk hunting, but they've got a good population of Roosevelt's in the west, and Eastern's got a good population of Rocky Mountain elk. So we're here to hunt Rocky Mountain elk today. It's nice and cold. It's probably 30. Hopefully these elk are up moving around. Should be fun. Let's go hunting. These blowdowns, mossy giants scattered like matchsticks over the mountainside, a chore for even Sasquatch to hike across, but hardly noticed by the elk who clear them in one bound. It may not look it, but this is the easy part of Washington State. Washington is known to have thick, dense forests. But here in eastern Washington, you don't have the big undergrowth like you do in western Washington. But as you can see, you look up through there, it's still thicker than heck. So it's either going to be a real close shot, or it's probably going to be too far for the old Hawken. We're going to have to get up close and personal. Hunting elk with his Hawken in eastern Washington, the first game Laramie Miller finds is moose but he presses on in his pursuit of the stately Wapiti. Through the heavy growth of timber, he does see deer. Ridge, much too far for his hawking, Laramie spots a herd of elk, telling him that they are indeed here. Carrying a blued steel muzzle loader requires the constant care of the hunter. Here I got just some regular old gun oil, and I'm just gonna oil down all the metal on this so it'll help prevent it from rusting as much and as much as I'm in the woods and as much as I'm out here, you can't help but get a few rust spots here and there, you know. Go ahead and load her up. I've got my bullet. He 
you want to make sure it's seated real good because it's, it's a big uh-oh if you've got airspace in between your powder and your bullet. It's going to be a big hiccup. Now I'm ready to go kill me an elk. All I need is put a cap in there. I'm ready to go. It's a good thing Laramie oiled his gun as sleet slashes in. The wet from the coast and the cold from the north meet up in these mountains. And for Laramie, any elk that may be out there are soon swallowed up in the heavy bank of fog. I like it tough, but this makes it real tough. Now, rain comes in to make matters worse. Now it's starting to rain. We have lots of fog. I think I'd rather it be snowing than this crap. In the steep terrain of eastern Washington's forests, Laramie Miller follows elk sign as the weather and visibility turn bad. Plus the worst hunting conditions you can have. Conditions like this affect rifles too. By choosing a black powder hawken, Laramie has upped the ante on this hunt. In its day, nothing matched a hawken for reliability. Yet misfires were to be expected. Misfire. A flake of powder or a speck of rust is all it takes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this breech plug out. At the end of this is where your cap goes. There's a little pinhole, goes down and your powder is seated right there at the back. So your cap sends the spark, lights your powder on fire, and then you got your bullet. See, and I usually like to take this and soak it in soap water, because as you can tell, there's a little bit of rust. You can see where the gunpowder is on the end. You know, you want to make sure that's all as clean as you can. Say your powder gets wet or your gun's not clean property. Say that little hole right there gets clogged up. You pull the trigger and all it's going to go is pop. It's going to be like a cap gun. It goes pop. You think he's going to stand there and look around and see what happened? A misfire might cost you an animal, but it could cost you your life. Laramie Miller has experienced the crucible of a misfire on old Ephraim the Grizzly. Only the bear's momentary confusion grants Laramie's suddenly clumsy fingers time to find one new percussion cap. <laughs> Dang it. It's the thought of past misfires that haunts Laramie on this hunt for elk. I do bring a bore brush. Swab your barrel until you're not getting any more black is the biggest thing. You want to clean your gun every eight shots or so. You, your gun's going to be firing different because it always fires a little different when it's clean. I like to, after I clean it, fire it. That way, I've got a little bit of powder. The barrel's seasoned for me, so when I do, have that big bull elk standing there and pull the trigger, that bullet flies true. Before the days of the Hawken, facing Mr. Grizzly was even more perilous. The only mountain dweller mightier than Sasquatch is the Grizzly. Many found the tales of the bear's cunning, ferocity, and resilience to be outlandish until they met him. Lewis and Clark, with six of their expedition's best hunters, had the misfortune of surprising an enormous boar along a riverbank. From 40 yards, four hunters fired their rifle ball striking home. But the bear, foaming frothy blood from pierced lungs, charged on through the smoke of the flintlocks. Swinging long clawed paws like war hammers, the grizzly scattered the eight men, frantically trying to stuff powder and ball into their empty rifles. Three more shots found the bear, but seemingly without effect. Two of the hunters ran to the edge of a tall bluff above the river. The grizzly, in enraged pursuit, and leaped onto the shallow water 20 feet below. Without breaking stride, old Ephraim dived after them, 
determined to exact a price for his wounds. Shooting down from the bluff, another of the hunters crashed a bow. The eight fired into the bear into its skull, ending the terrifying pitched battle along the banks of the river. Laramie pushes on through the dense forest, hoping to see an elk at a distance where he can plant a stalk, but also knowing that he may need to be ready for an elk at point-blank range as he's working through the brush. Laramie Miller has found moose in this one-time Oregon territory, and the spoor of the elk he hopes to take with his hawking as he follows along the trail of the mountain men in the dense forests of eastern Washington. This country here in eastern Washington is so thick. I mean, you can't see 10, 20 yards. And when you can see a distance, it's five, six, eight hundred yards. It makes it really tough when you're trying to go after something with a smoke pole. Ideally, I want to be 100 yards or closer, closer preferably, but the only thing I can think is get up as high as we can and get to where it opens up a little bit at tree line or head down the mountain a little bit to where it opens up so that we can still hunt and actually have an opportunity because in this stuff, it's so loud and so thick that the animals, and they can hear and smell and see you way before you can hear, smell, see them walking through this thick stuff, so. We've got to evaluate our game plan and change it a little bit. Laramie's plan leads him to the higher country, where he can scan the horizon as he searches for elk and see the changing of the seasons unfurling below him. The yellow and red colors of fall spreading through the forest leaves like the embers of a coal fire. Inside his fire tonight, Laramie can feel the shadow of a possible misfire, adding to the growing tension of this already difficult hunt. But he sleeps, nonetheless, because he has to. Sasquatch's dreams are his own, but maybe the dream of this hunt is about to come true. Well. We got two nice bulls up here on the top of the ridge. They're about a thousand yards away, but we're gonna haul ass over there and see if we can't get up on them. What can you say about country like this except too tall to fly over and too thick to crawl under? Laramie draws as close as he can. But even so, it's still a considerable shot for the Hawkin 54. Laramie seats the percussion cap as carefully as if he were setting a diamond in a ring. Two hundred yards, and the bull elk didn't hump up and isn't dragging a leg. Now, Sasquatch must go and hunt for blood. I think I hit him. That was a far shot for the muzzleloader, but I think I hit him. Let's go check. Agonizing moments. If Laramie doesn't find blood, then maybe the elk isn't hit. But if he finds it, his day and his doubts have just begun. Got blood. These are some big, tough animals. I smacked him with the 54. It's a little over 200 yards, so it didn't go completely through, but I mean, he's bleeding, and he's already gone probably 100, 150 yards. How in the f did 
you run through here and not get blood all over the place. I keep waiting to look up and see him, but this is ridiculous. He's probably gone 400 yards. You know, I love elk hunting more than anything, but this right here is what really kills me is, I shot this bull. He was probably a little out of range. I've made that shot many times. I hit him, but after looking at it, I don't think I hit any vitals, but I drew blood. Once I draw blood, I'm done. That's the way it is. That was a dang nice bull. I'm gonna keep looking for him and hopefully I can find him, but if I don't, it was a great hunt, but I'll have many sleepless nights thinking about it. Certainly the mountain men whose path Sasquatch walks along had sleepless nights of their own. Now the ice is here and winter's coming, and Laramie will have to leave the elk country behind as he follows his quest. Laramie will have one last supper and one last uneasy sleep here in elk country before he breaks camp. He has other marks on the map to reach before his season ends. This meal is not what he planned, not fresh liver and heart, but it is still part of the same bounty. Bet you didn't know Sasquatch was a gourmet chef. Tonight, Laramie will lie by his fire, and if the sky clears, he may see the star to point him in his next direction.